Hey everybody, welcome back to All About The Popcorn. My name is Stephanie. Thank you all for clicking on this video. Now if you're someone who enjoys talking about film or doing these monthly ranking or tier list type of videos, then how about clicking that subscribe button. So today we're gonna be ranking all the movies that I saw in the month of May. <laughs> I saw like 12 movies I think this month I yeah no I'm always like trying to count at the end now as always this is the video that you're gonna have to just kind of deal with on the ring light so starting off is I don't even know what the name of this movie is you guys secret magic agency control something like that hey guys so it's called secret magic control agency that's so sad I forgot the name of the movie. Okay, so obviously this movie is for kids. Okay, I just saw it. It's a Netflix film. It was cute enough, but definitely not for the whole family. Um, it's a different version of Hansel and Gretel. Gretel is basically now this like secret agent, but Hansel does live on the opposite side of the law. He is this wanted magician. Of course, we're in this like fairy tale world and I don't honestly remember too much about it but it was cute enough move on to another Netflix movie called monster and this one was just an okay movie so we're basically following Steve a 17 year old like honor student who's like a up-and-comer filmmaker he has like a future ahead of himself uh, but unfortunately he does of course hang out with the wrong kind of group and he ends up um, involved in this um, murder charge now this is a movie that had a bunch of production issues not COVID related um, I think at some point it was COVID related but this was something that was supposed to come out like back in 2018 it does start Kevin Harrison Jr. he's a 17 year old kid who kind of gets himself in this situation his mom is played by Jennifer Hudson his dad is Jeffrey White uh, we have uh, John David Washington ASAP Rocky also comes out in the movie We're basically kind of going what led up to that murder and what his actual involvement was within the the murder itself like is he fully innocent or did he actually have something to do with it but we will not get into like spoilers like that next would be Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead and this one you can currently uh, stream it on Netflix and it's also available in theaters we are in a zombie heist movie it is a lot of fun it is a tad bit too long I think it was the zombies here are freaking like organizers smart there's also some other things that be happening with the zombies as well and like the overall outcome of everybody in the the movie was just like a big shocker like I'm just like wait a minute that happened like what really it was a very enjoyable movie you guys at the end of the day it was a very enjoyable movie uh, but we're gonna go ahead and keep moving on to super me this one is another one you can find on Netflix and it's actually pretty interesting to be honest with you like the whole concept we're following this struggling writer who just cannot get a good night's sleep because he's having these very lucid vivid dreams and that some thing is trying to murder him and he ends up finding out that he can actually bring things out of his dreams into the real world kind of thing like um freddy krueger little by little he finds out that hey you know what if i can start dreaming big expensive things i can sell it and then i can actually bring out money and i can go from this like nobody the struggling writer who got evicted to I'm living up in the penthouse. It can get pretty violent. It, well, it, it does get violent um, there towards the end part of the movie. Uh, but overall, it was just an okay movie. Uh, moving on to another Netflix movie, Oxygen. We are just following Liz, who wakes up in this pod has no recollection of what's going on, how it is that she got here, where she's at. She just knows that she is hooked up to all these machines, has no memory. We have this very high tech machine who's able to talk to her, but it's very limited on what um, he's able to tell her. I think it's so funny that she has no recollection, but yeah, she knows how to handle this very high tech machinery very well. It is one of those kind of like claustrophobic, thrilling type of films now of course the 
important thing about the movie would be time she has a very limited amount of time literally the length of the movie to figure out what's going on what she needs to do to survive because her oxygen is about to run out even though it did have honestly maybe like one or two like really kind of thrilling kind of like ooh kind of moments um the overall movie for me was just okay up next would be Hulu's. I haven't done a Hulu um, movie in quite some time. Now we are following two teenage girls, Sunny and Lupe, on this journey of Sunny trying to find the Plan B pill. So it is a comedy movie, you guys. This movie is going to remind you a lot of Superbad, or better yet, Book Smart. It's not a perfect movie, you guys, but it has some hilarious, hilarious moment so i'm gonna put it under enjoyable i will say that it does have like a full frontal like penis scene which is the part that was hilarious you guys i should have done like a just a general review on it up next would be spiral from the book of saw the ninth installment within the saw franchise um i do have a saw ranking video as well you guys can check it out um i've talked about this quite a bit now at this point um overall it is a good movie um you can check out my saw ranking to see where exactly it falls within the whole saw franchise but once again i will say that we are um within the perspective of the detectives this is more of what's happening within like the legal side of the other things and not necessarily focusing on the traps don't really focus too much on the traps and you can actually think of this more so like part one how the traps were kind of done within that part of it for my people who might be like squeamish or whatnot this movie yeah i feel like you could watch it because again you really don't see the traps or i mean there are traps but they're not like terrible they're like more on the milder side and i don't think you necessarily need to see any of the other saw movies when it comes to this particular one because it doesn't technically tie in with the other ones um we do have mention of john kramer within this one but that's about it new jigsaw person um did they name the pig i don't know it's like this stupid little pig i wasn't here for it i wasn't here for his voice i really wish the new killer would have got his hands on like old tapes and stuff and i used that kind of thing i know that would have been too much but you know what technology now you could have done it you could have done it um chris rock he did great within the film as well uh you know of course more of a dramatic feel or tone to it he does have a little bit of comedy kind of put in there as well the opening part of the movie was really fun we're gonna go ahead and keep going on with netflix's the woman in the window this is another one that's been kind of like honestly i've been seeing more like negative reviews than positive ones um i was actually a positive one I truly enjoyed it. Um, this is based off of a book. I have not read the book yet or listened to the books. Yeah, I know I love uh, me and my Audible books. Now, I did see a YouTube video where they were actually doing the comparisons. And since I did a review on this, yes, I did a review on this, I'm just going to share with you some of these comparisons that I thought was pretty interesting that I thought would have really helped the movie out a whole bunch more. Now, it does star Amy Adams. She does suffer from um, agoraphobia. And she's actually a child therapist. Now apparently in the book, which is like a big focus in the book, is that she's actually like online with like a support system, like a support group for other people who have phobias. And she actually helps some of these people as well. And apparently that's like a big, huge part of the movie. Because in the movie, they do put her being an outcast, not really having anybody. And apparently that's not really true. Okay, honestly, that's the only comparison I can remember at the time. Apparently that's the only thing that really like stood out. But there were a couple other things, like, well, not just a couple, like quite a few other things that they totally like, changed up because they you know they always do that something with the killer oh yeah the killer okay that's part of the twist with the online deal and the killer okay spoiler here i'll, I'll put a time code if you don't want to know <laughs> i'm just gonna share it with you guys anyway uh apparently the killer 
was the friend like she was being catfish next up would be those who wish me dead um you can currently find this on hbo max i don't know i think it might be on there for another like two weeks or so it is one of those that's on there for 30 days um you can also find it in theaters i really honestly wasn't totally here for it uh i'm just gonna say it's an okay movie um angelina she is this like fire jumper and she's taking care of this kid who like killers are coming after him and hit well him because they killed the dad they killed other people they never officially say why they were killing and why officially they were going after them i mean i didn't expect much with the movie going in now they do try to sell it to you more as there's a forest fire happening and the forest fire really doesn't have too too much going on with it like you would assume that there would be like more forest fires around we're gonna be like fighting these fighting okay yes that's how you fight a forest fire it's just one big forest fire that's caused by of course the villains okay guys we're gonna move on to friends the reunion so it's not a new episode this is more of a remembering them talking we have an interview with james gordon which i've been hearing a lot of people talking crap about him like i didn't realize that people did not like james gordon like that i thought he was fun they're like what does he have on hollywood because he's like popping up everywhere i'm like dude leave him alone so obviously i'm gonna put it in a while it might not be wow for a lot of people but i love friends friends is one of my favorite shows of all time i absolutely love the show i did get a little bit tear eye in certain parts i'm so like we find out things that happen in real life uh between uh, uh jennifer and and david just things that well, technically didn't happen within that time. Uh, we don't unfortunately hear too, too much from Matthew Perry. He is more on the quieter side. It seemed like uh, the producers probably didn't want to focus too much on his sad life. We did have a nice little fashion show and Justin Bieber and, and Cara Delavange, I can never say her name. They kind of came and did a little deal. I love them, they're great, but honestly, honestly, personally i would have loved for them to have brought ben and emma back and they could have had that little moment within this reunion because regardless they were a part of it i know emma technically was still a baby but you know ben we saw him like kind of grow up just a little bit i can't remember which uh sprouts brother was ben was it both of them kind of with twins especially when they're little they kind of like swap them out um uh, but it might have just been one who knows oh you probably know i don't know which one it was but they could have had both. They said that they don't want to do an episode because the show ended so well with everybody just kind of having a happy ending that they don't want to like reopen it. But honestly, I think it would have been really cool if we had like just one episode and had it like a full 30 minute segment, you know, and of course no commercials and maybe have had it like Emma's graduation or the twins is... 18th birthday i think it would have been cool to kind of have brought them back as a reunion uh because you know who knows where they all have been going on because of course joey you know he moved to california i don't know if you remember some of you might be fairly new uh within the friends uh world but joey had a spin-off show it was not a success i think it only lasted a season maybe two let's go ahead and keep going because it's friends and i will keep talking about it again i should have done a damn review on it but I just did it. Wrath of Man starring Jason Statham. It's a Guy Ritchie film. Now before I do get to the final few of this tier list, if you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. I was disappointed in it, you guys. I think it was just an okay movie. I thought I was gonna go in there and really like it. Certain things happen with Jason Statham. Somebody important. Damn it. Oh, guys. I don't want to give you guys any spoilers. I don't know how to talk about it. There's some pretty cool action sequences here. I'm trying to think about how I can tell you guys about the movie. But, like, I feel like every time I want to say something, it's going to give something away. I know it's a Guy Ritchie film, like I said. But it didn't feel like a full-on Guy Ritchie film. I don't know if I was by myself on that one. I don't know, you guys. But we're gonna leave it at that. I know it was like super quick, like nothing. You get here, what you get in every freaking just see the movie. Him looking hot, him shooting people up. Last movie, Cruella. So when I just saw today, I just uploaded a review for it. I'm not gonna talk too much about this one. I personally really enjoyed it. It's the newest Disney live action movie. It's one of the better um, live action films. This is an origin story of Cruella. We have 
wonderful fashion we have a really good soundtrack that might have been a little bit overused on certain parts but it's okay we'll, we'll let it pass this is more on the darker tone of disney it is rated pg-13 i did give it a large popcorn but i think it was ultimately just an enjoyable movie i don't think it was quite there in the wow section just because it was too long i think in my review i said it was like two and a half hours but it's like two hours 14 minutes um definitely should have been under the two hour mark there's are a couple things here and there that they could have removed from it uh, but overall it's a great movie so these are the movies that i saw for the month of may let me know down below did we watch any of the same things do you agree where i put them at if we don't that's totally okay just a reminder this is my list all right guys so that's it for me today until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye